everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for tea time. Today it's a little bit of black tea. So many of you guys said, listen, you need to man up a little bit and drink some black tea like we do from the other side of the pond. So here's to you over there in England and everyone else in Europe that loves that black tea. This is some organic black tea, some let's call it English breakfast tea. Really good stuff, really good. Let me have another sip here. So anyways, guys, this is going to be an update video to my last video. So if you haven't watched it yet, please go back and watch my last video. It was about alternatives to Illustrator. And I gave you my personal favorite. I ended up buying it. And um, I just, I think that it's great. And it really worked out awesome. It was Affinity Designer. So that being said, there was something quirky with Affinity Designer that I want to bring up to you, show you so you don't end up making the same mistake that I did, number one. And number two, a lot of you guys gave me information that I didn't know of before in regards to the other software. Now, one of my major criteria when picking the software that I did was it needs to be able to load AI files. It was very important to me to load in Adobe Illustrator files because I literally have hundreds of them and a lot of client work is in .ai files. So that was very important. Now, one of the programs that I did not get to test was Corel and Corel just, I've got so much feedback that people just absolutely love it. They really thought that I did a disservice by not testing it, but honestly, guys, I just don't have enough time. I did as much as I could with Illustrator. I need to move on to Photoshop and Lightroom and Premiere and all the rest of them, okay? So anyways, if you guys are using Corel, Sorry, and if it's working great, it's loading AI files, that's fantastic. So if anyone has not tried Corel as of yet, give it a shot. Even though I didn't, doesn't matter. Remember, what I'm telling you here is only like this much. Go down in the comment area, read those comments, and you'll get a heck of a lot more knowledge than what I can provide in these like 5, 10, 20 minutes, all right? So also what came up was Inkscape, what I said was number two on my list also was able to load AI files. There was a little bit of a trick that had to be done. Now I tested this trick and it actually works. So this video is going to be what I feel to be the absolute best free Adobe Illustrator alternative. And the answer to that is Inkscape, period. Now, I'm gonna show you something here that really helped me out a lot. I'm gonna show you this trick and we're gonna get into a couple of other things. So let's get into some, let's say housekeeping real quick. Once again, I wanna thank everyone for the 20,000 subscribers. We just hit that milestone. I'm going to continue this for about another five days, the giveaway. So if you put in a comment down below, as well as subscribe to the channel and just simply turn on your notifications, you'll be automatically entered to win. Someone's going to win every one of my products, J. Christina products. So that's the Aurora Camera Care products, the Focus Pyramid Autofocus Lens Calibration Tool, the PRT, which is the Photo Reference Tool, and everything else. So once again, in the comment area, please put a comment, but also put in there what you think I should add to the channel, what else you would like to see here. Because this isn't just my channel, it's your channel also. This is a community that we're trying to build here, not just like some guy talking and ranting about photography, videography, tech, or whatever, okay? It is this community. So now that the housekeeping is done, I want to reiterate that the absolute best free Adobe Illustrator alternative, in my personal opinion, is Inkscape. Now remember, my criteria at the time was no subscriptions, was very, very important, easy to jump in and use, and finally, it needs to be able to import the AI files. And Inkscape did everything besides import AI files. Now that has been fixed. So before I bring you over to my screen, I wanna say that if you're on Mac or Linux, you most likely will not have to do anything to just go and change the file extension of your file. What we need to do is basically change the extension of the file from a .ai to .pdf. This is the trickery. So if I bring up my file system in Windows 10, you can see the file that we wanna open is a .ai file. And I have no way to change this from within Windows 10 unless we do this modification. So what you wanna do is you wanna go into the search box at the bottom of your screen and type in file 
Explorer Options. Hit enter and you'll see this window pop up. Let me move this over so you can see this a little better. Now, from here you wanna click on View and then head down to where it says hide extensions for known file types because right now they're currently hidden. So if we click on this and then hit apply, as you can see over here in this window, we now have .ai for this file. In the file above it, you can see it's a .af design. Now we wanna right click on this file, hit rename and change it from .ai to .pdf and hit enter. And it'll pop up with a warning that says, if you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? The answer is yes, guys, go ahead and change it. So now you can see the file is considered a PDF file. Now, let's go ahead and open up Inkscape, and then we're going to open that specific file. Let me go to open, head over to my folder, and here it is as a PDF. Now. It's going to import this now as a PDF. Now remember, the last time I did this, it didn't work at all. Now that it's a PDF, it is working. It is popping up and saying, hey, this is what we can do with it. What would you like to do? Now what I personally did is I left everything alone. I just came down here where it says two and I moved it all the way up to maximum to very fine where it says precision of approximating gradient mesh. I hit okay. And there you go, guys. This time it worked perfectly. It didn't come up with this error message. Now, if you remember in my last video with Affinity Designer, it did mess up on import these bullets right here, just a little bit, not a big deal. Whereas with this, it did not at all. The only thing that is not right here is this letter A. That's all I have to do is click on it, come over here to fonts and then find the font that it should be, choose light and then hit apply. Change the size like this, and we're pretty much golden with this. So once again, Inkscape ends up being a great tool, even if you need to be able to load in your AI files. The trick once again is, is just simply renaming the AI files to .pdf. What I would suggest is copying those AI files into another folder, let's say an Inkscape folder, and then do the modifications to that so that you can retain those AI files just in case you wanna change them in the future or maybe you go back to Adobe Illustrator in the future or whatever it is. Retain, retain, retain. Always keep your masters. It is very important before doing any of this. So once again, Inkscape to me is the number one free alternative to Adobe Illustrator. Now, the next thing that I wanna show you, let me go ahead and close this. So check this out. Let me go ahead and click on Instructions Side B. Now this is the instructions on the back of one of my ACC, Aurora Camera Care products. Now what I'm showing you here is something that is a little bit quirky with Affinity Designer. Now, I don't know if it's just me derping and just don't know the program as of yet, but I wanna show you this because for me, I go to press with just about everything. The stuff needs to be press ready and needs to be as sharp as possible. Now, check this out. If I go ahead and zoom in here, we have this little yellow highlighter that I have going on, okay? Now, as you can see, the text is absolutely rock solid as it should be because it is vector base. But watch what happens when I go ahead and save this out. I'm gonna come over here to file, export. Export as PDF. Now I'm gonna set it up as PDF for print. Hit export. And now let me go ahead and open that. As you can see right here, this PDF that we just made, let me click on that. I wanna show you this. If I zoom in here, all of the text is nice and crispy, just like it should be, right? But now look right here. I hope this comes across well on your side. But as you can see here, the text is basically rasterized. So where I have that highlighter over my text, it rasterized that area. Now, why is that? I really don't know. I think that's very strange. Consider this, this is a vector-based piece of software. We basically have a vector box over the words that highlights the words, right? So that doesn't make sense to me, but what I did find out, now I'm gonna leave this right here so we can use it as reference. Let me close this. Now, what I did find out was if I took the highlighter 
and moved it underneath the words. So the words are going to be on top of the highlighter. Now remember, the highlighter is just simply a box that's filled, okay? This is not a raster um, highlight. It is literally a simple box that has color in it, period. Now, if I put this underneath instructions here and I go ahead and save this out again, let me hit export, go to PDF, hit export, and I'm gonna rename this dash highlighter and hit enter. All right, so as you can see, I have two files. Let me open up the new one and zoom in here. All right, these look great. And now look at that, absolutely perfect the way it should be. Vector yellow box, vector text on top of it. Nothing is rasterized, perfect. This is the way it should be, no pixelization, all right? So bear this in mind. Once again, let me go ahead in here and open up the other one, the first one, zoom in, and once again, you can see this is all pixelated. So guys, this is just a little tip that I wanted to tell you now. Like I said, I don't know if this is something that is just a bug, let's say, in Affinity Designer. Maybe it's just a derp because I don't know the program well enough. But in my mind, in the way I used to work with Adobe Illustrator, it didn't matter where you put the vector. Vector remains vector no matter what. Okay, maybe there's something with Affinity Designer that looks at this box as being maybe raster just because it's a box and it's filled with a color. But since it's not a gradient of any kind, it's just simply a yellow box, I don't see why that could be an issue. So a couple of takeaways from this video is number one, the best free Adobe Illustrator alternative in my personal opinion is Inkscape. Free is free and it does an amazing job. It really works out well. Number two, if you need to open up AI files in Inkscape, just simply rename them, change the file extension to PDF. That's not just renaming the name, but you have to change the file extension to PDF and it will open just fine. And lastly, number three, if you are using Affinity Designer and you find that you're starting to get some pixelization with your text and your backgrounds, check to see your layer positioning. As you can see, by just simply changing the layer positioning, I was able to get the absolute best press quality possible out of it. So don't forget to head over to my jchristina.com forward slash life after Adobe alternatives. Check that out so that if there's something on the list that I missed, tell me in the comment area and I'll add it in there so the rest of the community can benefit from your knowledge. And also remember the contest is still going on so simply subscribe, turn on your notifications and put that comment in the comment area and you might be the winner of all of my J. Christina Photography Tools products. Once again, thrown in a box and sent directly to you. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this content. If you have, please throw me a big thumbs up, that would be awesome. And smash that subscribe button so you can get all of my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon so when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com where you can get all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years and hopefully there's something there that you might like and if there is, please pick it up and support me. That would be awesome. So I'm going to finish up my tea and get back to these alternatives and maybe do some client work. That would be good. <laughs> so that's it. We'll see you in the next one. Many blessings to you.